The long and fierce rivalry between aviation giants Airbus and Boeing has shaped the global airline industry for decades revolving around battles over technology pricing and market share. Unfortunately, while the two titans were engrossed in competition and consuming vast resources, they inadvertently overlooked a critical strategic gap that they themselves failed to notice. Seizing this opportunity, a third player stepped in to dominate the neglected segment Embraer. So how did Embraer outmaneuver Boeing and Airbus to dominate this market? How did the industry giants respond? Let's find out. The full-scale rivalry between aviation giants Airbus and Boeing was not just a battle over sales, but also a strategic failure of historic proportions. Throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, both companies became caught up in a race to maximize profits through economies of scale, pouring all their resources into developing narrow-body and long-range wide-body aircraft. They believed the future lay solely in planes carrying 150 passengers or more. This stubbornness and lack of foresight created a deadly blind spot the demand for thin routes and connections to secondary cities was completely ignored. Hundreds of regional airports worldwide could not accommodate these giant machines. As a result, airlines were forced to operate outdated cramped 50-seat jets with low efficiency or fly larger aircraft with low seat occupancy, leading to prolonged losses and reduced air connectivity for entire communities. This oversight not only created operational and connectivity challenges, but also revealed a huge profit opportunity waiting for a properly designed aircraft to serve this overlooked segment. Indeed, the market was clearly calling for a modern efficient jet, with an optimal size of 70 to 150 seats, a sweet spot perfectly suited for short and medium haul routes. Although analysts estimated the potential demand at 11 to 13 billion USD annually, Boeing and Airbus underestimated or outright ignored it, seeing the segment as too small and not worth the technical effort. However, this classic missed opportunity combined with internal crises and legal disputes such as the 737 MAX incident opened the door wide for a third player. Unburdened by legacy design constraints or a bigger is better mindset, the newcomer focused on developing fuel-efficient jets specifically tailored for the 70 to 150 seat segment. The strategic failure of Boeing and Airbus not only cost them billions in revenue, but also handed the competitor a solid foothold, laying the groundwork to expand and challenge their global dominance in the future. So how did this third competitor enter the race? The story begins in 1969 in São José dos Campos, when a group of Brazilian engineers and policymakers decided to establish a national aircraft manufacturer, a first for the country. At the center of the project was aerospace engineer Osiris Silva, who had a vision for Brazil's place in the skies. Embraer, short for Empresa Brasileira de Aeronautica, was born as a government-backed initiative aimed at nurturing domestic aviation expertise and reducing dependence on foreign suppliers. In its early years, Embraer's ambitions were modest. The company focused on practical, durable aircraft, such as the 15-seat Bandeirante, which first flew in 1968, and the EMB-120 Brasilia introduced in 1985. These aircraft quickly became mainstays for regional airlines across South America, Africa, and even the United States, quietly building a reputation for reliability in harsh conditions that the industry's giants often overlooked. By the early 1990s, however, the global aviation market was changing rapidly. State-owned companies struggled to keep pace with innovation, and the Brazilian maker found itself at a historic crossroads. In 1994, the Brazilian government decided to privatize the company, ushering in a new era of international investment risk-taking and operational agility. Freed from bureaucratic constraints, this maker began pursuing bold ideas attracting global talent and operating at a pace comparable to that of international competitors. Embraer's long-standing experience in the regional turboprop sector gave the company a unique perspective they knew how to design aircraft for challenging environments and for customers that Boeing and Airbus often overlooked. This foundation, rooted both in practical needs and creative ingenuity, prepared them to seize opportunities that the industry giants failed to recognize. And that opportunity arrived, they realized that a segment between outdated regional jets and the large aircraft of the industry giants had been left wide open. In 1999, therefore, Embraer's engineering team gathered in São José dos Campos to tackle a question that the major players had long abandoned how to design an aircraft that truly met the needs of regional airlines rather than simply serving the ambitions of the manufacturer. They quickly found the answer, which became the foundation for the E-Jet family, four aircraft specifically designed for the 70 to 146 seat range. The E-170 and E-175 targeted the lower end, while the E-190 and E-195 served busier routes. 
This was not a matter of shrinking a larger jet or stretching a smaller one. Each model was built from the ground up precisely aimed at the sweet spot that Boeing and Airbus had overlooked. Moreover, a key design decision made all the difference these aircraft's ability to operate on runways as short as 5,000 feet. This capability opened up hundreds of airports that the 737 or A320 could not serve aircraft that typically require 7,000 feet or more. Instantly, cities that had once been off the aviation map were reconnected, unlocking a massive potential market. Besides led by Luis Carlos Afonso, the engineers focused intensely on weight wing design and landing gear to ensure that even the largest E-Jet could operate from short runways while maintaining performance and comfort. Every detail from seating to cabin layout was optimized to enhance the experience for both passengers and airlines. However, challenges emerged immediately. Launching the E-Jet program was far from a safe bet. Inside the company, heated debates arose over costs risks and whether airlines would truly trust a company that had only recently emerged from difficulties. Yet Embraer's leadership recognized that the market gap was too valuable to ignore. They believed that if timed correctly, a small player could turn the tables rising from an overlooked contender to an indispensable force in the regional aviation market. History would prove them right. The E-Jet not only filled the gap the giants had ignored, but also transformed how airlines operated short and medium haul routes. Its ability to access smaller airports, optimize seat occupancy, and provide operational flexibility set new standards forcing Boeing and Airbus to rethink their own strategies. When the first E-170 entered commercial service in 2004, the regional aviation world had never experienced such a powerful new force. Airlines quickly realized that these aircraft were not just filling a gap, they were redefining the very concept of regional jets. The E-Jet family, which includes the E-170, E-175, E-190, and E-195, allows airlines to right-size their operations, matching the right aircraft to each route, accessing airports that had been neglected for decades, and optimizing profitability in ways previously achievable only by larger jets. Do you know what makes the E-Jet truly stand out? It is not just the numbers themselves, but how those numbers transform an airline's entire operational strategy. Every route has a break-even load factor that determines its viability. With older, larger aircraft airlines had to fill up to 85% of seats to break even almost impossible on thin routes. But with the E-175, the break-even point drops to only 60-70% to of seats sold. On a 76-seat configuration that equates to just 45 to 53 passengers, routes that would have caused heavy losses with a 737 or A320 suddenly become steady, reliable sources of revenue. Operating costs also provide a major advantage. The E-175 consumes about 1 100 gallons of fuel on a 500-mile flight significantly less than the roughly 1 800 gallons used by a 737-700 over the same distance. Fewer engines and a lighter weight also mean lower airport fees and reduced flight operation costs. Crew expenses are likewise cut regional jets typically require just two pilots and two flight attendants, whereas larger aircraft demand a much bigger team. These numbers add up to a simple yet powerful business equation airlines can serve more cities, increase flight frequency, and maintain stable profits without worrying about empty seats or financial losses. For finance teams, the E-Jet equation is nearly impossible to ignore an opportunity that Boeing and Airbus had never successfully tapped. Beyond the numbers, what truly changes the game is the passenger experience. Stepping aboard an E-Jet, the difference is immediately noticeable. Gone are the cramped, narrow cabins of older regional jets. The 2-2 seating configuration ensures no middle seats, while each window is larger than those on a Bombardier CRJ, letting in natural light and offering clearer views outside. Overhead bins are spacious, easily accommodating standard carry-on luggage without the usual struggle or gate check hassle. Noise is minimized thanks to superior insulation and strategically placed engines making the cabin feel more like a mainline jet than a regional aircraft. Internal airline surveys consistently show that passengers rate the E-175 and E-190 highly for comfort even on short flights. But what makes the E-Jet even more attractive to airlines goes beyond passenger experience. At Embraer's factory in São José dos Campos, labor costs are significantly lower than in the U.S. or Western Europe, providing an immediate price advantage. The company controls much of its domestic supply chain, shielding itself from currency fluctuations and international market volatility. At the same time, production flexibility allows the maker to navigate strikes or sudden changes in exchange rates, ensuring that the assembly lines keep running smoothly. Finally, the reliability of the aircraft series adds another layer to its competitive edge. 
with an operational rate exceeding 99% under all conditions from the hot, humid runways of the Amazon to the icy winters of Canada and high-altitude airports in Mexico Embraer, ensures exceptional performance. Its global support network with parts and technicians stationed from Miami to Munich guarantees that any issue is just a phone call and a short flight away. These advantages create strong customer stickiness. Once an airline invests in eJet's training pilots and technicians stocking spare parts and scheduling flights around their performance, switching to another manufacturer becomes a costly and risky gamble. The cost efficiency, reliability, and operational effectiveness of these aircraft not only drive sales for the manufacturer but also secure long-term customer loyalty, making it difficult for competitors to compete even those with greater resources. However, this success quickly rubbed the giants the wrong way. The regional jet market once ignored by Boeing and Airbus rapidly became a fiercely contested battleground. In 2017, Boeing filed a lawsuit against Bombardier accusing the C-Series of being sold below cost thanks to Canadian government subsidies. The U.S. Department of Commerce responded with nearly a 300% tariff a shock that sent waves through the aviation industry. However, the strategy backfired just a few months later. The U.S. International Trade Commission concluded that Bombardier had not harmed Boeing and the tariffs were removed overnight. The next shocks drew even more attention. On July 20th, 18th, Airbus purchased a majority stake in the C-Series for a symbolic price, instantly turning the aircraft into a weapon in the 100 to 150 seat segment competing directly with EJET. They quickly opened an assembly line in Alabama, completely avoiding the risk of tariffs while gaining a modern fuel efficient aircraft with an immediate foothold in the market. Not to be outdone, Boeing struck back also on July 20th, 18th. They announced the purchase of 80% of Embraer's commercial aircraft division for $4.2 billion. But the deal dragged on amid the 737 MAX crisis and the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. By April 2020, Boeing pulled out, leaving Embraer independent and the regional market more fragmented than ever. By 2023, Embraer held more than 70% of the U.S. regional aircraft market thanks to precise design and a strategy closely aligned with airlines' actual needs. The story of the E-Jet proves one thing in aviation the right size at the right time can make all the difference. While Boeing and Airbus chase larger planes, Embraer targeted the $11 billion gap they overlooked, transforming a neglected market into a global fortress and creating a lasting advantage no industry giant can easily break.